Okay, we're going to do some journal entries. This is problem 2-1, um, and they give us this uh, April transactions for this company. They have selected events that we want to record from April 1st to April 30th. They give us the list of account names that we should use, and they would like us to journalize these transactions. So we will go ahead and do that. So we'll start with our April 1st transaction. I guess I'll leave the, they don't give us a year. We'll leave that off. So April 1st says stockholders invested $50,000 in cash in exchange for company stock. So if we receive the cash, the company receives the cash, we're going to debit cash for $50,000. And then when they issue shares of common stock, they are giving those out to the stockholders or the owners, um, and they will, that will be equity on their accounts. So the stockholders give them cash, and the company gives them equity, common stock equity. So we credit common stock for that 50000 Then on April 4th, um, they purchased land costing $34,000 for cash. So land is an asset, so we debit that for the $34,000, and then they, whoops, they used cash, so we are gonna reduce our cash or credit our cash for that $34,000. Then on April 8th, It incurred advertising expense of $1,800 on account. So advertising expense is our debit. Expenses are normally debited. That's their normal balance, so $1,800. And then when it says on account, that tells us that we are crediting accounts payable. We now owe that. We didn't give them cash. We put it on an account, we're gonna receive an invoice and we'll pay that when it's due. So that's what accounts payable is. It's a liability for the company. On April 11th, they paid salaries to employees of $1,500. So we would have salaries and wages expense for, um, what did I just say, $1,500. And it says that they paid so I'm going to assume that's out of cash then. It doesn't say anything about, um, you know, they had accrued it or put it, at, set it up as a liability. So if it says they pay, then we assume it's, it, the credit goes to cash. Okay, then on April 12th, they hired a park manager at a salary of $3,500 per month, effective May 1st. Well, that's no impact to, you know, to record in GL. Now, when we actually, and when I say GL, I mean general ledger. So we don't make a journal entry. So no journal entry is required. So you don't even really have to, I mean, I guess, just write that. So if this was your homework, like put that in there so we know that you know that there's no entry really required for that. When we go to actually pay him on May 1st, that will be an accounting transaction. Right now, it's not. It's maybe something we want to be aware of, but we don't put anything in our, in our general journal or our general ledger. Okay, then April 13th, they paid $2,400 cash for a one-year insurance policy. So look over your list, but you can see right here you have prepaid insurance. So because it is in advance and we're paying for an entire year, we do not expense it, if I could type, um, insurance. We do not expense it, we put it in a prepaid account. So we do a prepaid insurance policy for $2,400 as a debit, and then we credit cash, because we paid for it. And then you can see, I mean, like if you were, this is in whiteboard, so it's not the greatest to tab around. In your homework, though, normally it gives you um, actual tabs that you would know. This is my debit column. This is my credit column. But as you're looking at each individual one of my entries, my debit column is always over here, comes first, and then I'm going to tab it in to my credit, and then my credit would be over in another column. 
So you always want to show this is my debits, this is my credits, so your debits are more to the left and your, and your credits are more to the right. But again, when you're doing your homework, it should be tabbed out for you. <clears throat> or if you were doing it in Excel, you know, that would, you could use a different column. April 17th, we declared and paid a $1,400 cash dividend. So again, look at our accounts listed, but dividends is one of our accounts. So we're going to debit dividends for the amount that we paid. And then <clears throat> we paid in cash. So we're going to credit cash. Okay, then on the 20th, we received $5,700 in cash for admission fees. So um, again, we're a park, so that's how we make our money. So let's look through our list here. We have service revenues. So that's what we're going to record, but we receive the cash. So that means the cash comes in. We debit cash because cash is normally a debit balance or an, an increase in cash is a debit balance. So that is for $5,700. And then again, we're gonna record the service revenue. Start with it. So we're gonna credit our service revenue for the $5,700. Then we have April 25th. Um, we sold 100 coupon books for $30 each, and each book contains coupons to en entitle the holder to one admission. So again, <clears throat> that is going to be um, cash coming into us. We sold them. So cash for 30, sorry, 100 books at $30 a piece. So $3,000 total is what we got when we sold them. Now, instead, though, of crediting service revenue, we haven't actually, it's not like they're here at the park right now. We've given them like pre-passes. So when we give somebody pre-passes, it means we haven't earned that revenue yet. They've paid for it, but we haven't done anything. So we call that unearned revenue. Now, as they use those tickets, um, then we will take it out of unearned revenue and it will become earned revenue. But we, again, we got to do something. We got to let them into the park um, in order to earn that. Okay, then I think I'll come over here so I got a little more space. So then we've got on April 30th, we received $8,900 cash in admission fees. So April 30th, <clears throat> we receive cash. So we debit that, $8,900. And then it's admission fees. So again, we've earned it, they're coming in. That will be our service revenue. Okay, then finally on April 30th, um, we paid the $840 balance that is owed for advertising on April 8th. So on April 8th, we put it all on account. We must have obviously paid something at some point that they're not mentioning to us. But what we're going to pay now is what they tell us. So if we look over here on April 8th, we put it to accounts payable. So now we have to take it out of accounts payable. So initially when we put it in, we credited accounts payable, which is the normal balance of a liability, so it made it bigger. Now we're paying it. So we're gonna debit it, which will make it smaller. So we're gonna debit the accounts payable, so that's gonna reduce how much now we owe for that advertising. And then we paid it, so we're gonna credit cash. So again, you want to get comfortable just with the flow of those transactions. Again, my, my whiteboard doesn't make it all nice and like in columns, but um, again, when you're doing it or if you would ever do it in Excel, that'll make it nice and in columns, different columns for your debits and your credits. But you want to be able to read these transactions and recognize that there's always going to be at least two accounts that we're dealing with. 
One of them is going to be a debit and one of them is going to be a credit. So you really have to go back to your accounting rules to say, okay, well, I know that assets, if, I, if my asset gets bigger or I'm initially recording an asset, that's a debit. If it's a liability, if I'm initially recording that liability or setting that liability up, that's going to be a credit. Now, as I pay those liabilities, I will debit it. And as I pay liabilities, I'm going to credit cash because then my, my cash gets smaller. Um, and then when you come to your revenues and expenses, your regular revenue account is if we're going to increase revenues or record revenues, those are a credit balance. With expenses, if we're going to record the expenses, that's a debit. So once you get those rules, even write them down, write them on a note card, do whatever you can, put them on a post note, just so you get real comfortable. But you'll always read these transactions, know that there's two sides. They always have to balance. Look at mine. They always balance what I did to one side, I do to the other. Um, and then just know which way you go with your debits and your credits.